I know so many CEOs and amazing leaders who you likely follow that have ADHD. And the more that I talk about it, the more that people come out of the woodwork and share that they also have it. And I really do believe that it is a part of my superpower. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. I remember showing up for an interview. It was on a day where I was doing four to five different interviews for this very show. And that day, my life forever changed. I interviewed an amazing woman named Tracy Otsuka, and she is an expert in ADHD. And the funny thing is, is that I did her entire interview just as a curious bystander. But as soon as we finished that interview, she said to me, she said, you know why I wanted to come on your show, right, Jenna? And I said, no, why? She goes, I 1000% believe that you have ADHD. And I remember being so caught off guard because I had just listened to her teach and talk about ADHD without ever once thinking she's talking about me. But that conversation that day changed my life forever. It's been almost a year since I was formally diagnosed with ADHD, and I truly believe that I would have never been diagnosed without speaking to Tracy that day. And so today, I am going to share a very honest, a very candid, real-time update on how things are going in my world. And even if you don't think that you have ADHD... I highly encourage you to listen to this episode with an open mind because it might give you insight into what it is like for someone who has a neurodivergent brain, or it might help you to understand what ADHD can look like for somebody and maybe help understand someone you love and why they are the way they are. So let's dive on in with a very honest and candid update on how I'm doing with my ADHD. If you love Gold Digger, then you'll love the Side Hustle Pro Podcast hosted by Nikayla Matthews Akome, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Side Hustle Pro showcases diverse entrepreneurs who have scaled from a humble side hustle to a full-blown profitable business. Every week, you'll learn actionable strategies to start small and get going wherever and whoever you are. In Nikayla's recent episode titled How to Make Content for Your Business in Less Than One Hour a Week, I learned so much about how to optimize recording sessions to get content done quicker, as well as new content creation tech and tools. You have to tune in. Listen to Side Hustle Pro wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is sponsored by Haya, the pediatrician approved super powered chewable vitamin that my kiddo loves. Head to HayaHealth.com slash gold digger for 50% off your first order and get your kids the full body nourishment they need. First, to kind of catch you up to speed in case you missed it, I have talked about my ADHD on this podcast, but it has been a topic that I get asked about a lot. After I had that interview with Tracy, I remember calling my mom and just talking to her about it. And right away, my mom said, Oh, yeah, dad definitely has ADD or ADHD. He totally had it as a kid. And I didn't realize that ADHD can be passed down. In fact, it is most commonly passed down. And no one in my family had ever told me that about my dad. Like I had no idea. I didn't know what to be looking for. I obviously had just grown up with my dad being my dad. And the more that we as a family dug into it, the more that my mom was like, honestly, I think like all three of you kids have it. It just might show up and present in different ways. And that is something important to note is that ADD and ADHD presents differently for every person that has it. But it was something that really opened up this discussion within my family and really encouraged me to get a formal diagnosis. I don't like to throw around terms and give them to myself as a part of my identity unless I am certain. 
And so I went through the formal process of getting diagnosed. I did a ton of different questionnaires, a lot of history data. They ask questions of loved ones to like report back on different things. And so it was this process that I did online with a trained professional. And it absolutely came back that I have ADHD. It was really interesting when I got the diagnosis because there's a part of me that was like, whoa, this is like actually real. And then there was a part of me that like felt relief in a lot of ways. You know, it's really interesting. And I think a part of this last almost full year of kind of exploring like, what does this mean? And what does this look like? And how does it work for me? It's been beautiful. And it's also been challenging in a lot of ways. You know, I have been a high achiever my entire life. Like when I think back, like my mom is like, one time she was like, I'm so sorry that we like miss this. And I'm like, well, no, it's not really shocking that you missed it. In fact, there's a lot of data and statistics around why young girls do not get diagnosed and why a lot of women in their like 30s and 40s are now getting diagnosed for the first time. And women oftentimes present differently than men when it comes to ADD and ADHD. And so it's not something that like, (laughs) I don't want my mom to feel guilt over that she missed it. Like, I missed it. I didn't know. It shows up very differently for different people. There are different types of it. There are different presentations of it. And so now, now that I have, you know, this adult experience and this formal diagnosis, I've had to be a lot more introspective about like my history, my past. For example, like I was a very good student, but I had to work incredibly hard to retain information. I would always have anxiety before quizzes and tests. Like I couldn't trust myself to remember things even though I had learned them and had studied them. I was a kind of person with my brain where I would study, study, study and like cram for a test and be really responsible in that preparation. But the second I took that exam, like that content would just like disappear from my brain. Like I wasn't good at retaining and being a good student took a lot of concentration from me. I was also someone who was very interested in maximizing my time. So growing up as a kid, I was really big into gymnastics. So not just the like, you know, once a week you go and like roll and do forward somersaults. Like I had gymnastics Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 4.30 to 8.45. So we would practice for over four hours a day. And so given my workload as a student and my focus on gymnastics, like I would have to get my homework done on the bus or during lunch period or sometimes during recess. And I would kind of figure out because I was so obsessed with gymnastics, I'd have to figure out different ways to like narrow in my focus and work ahead so that I could be at practice and not be worried about schoolwork. So It's just interesting sometimes like unpacking these different tendencies or things that have carried into my adulthood and looking back and being like, well, I probably wouldn't have thought that I struggled with different things, but I didn't also realize that my brain worked in a different way. One of the things that has been really interesting and enlightening and also very tricky recently is with my hormones, my ADHD is really greatly affected. I actually didn't know this was a thing until I was talking to my friend, Sasha, who is coming up on the podcast soon. She is a psychiatrist that specializes in ADHD. And during my interview with her, she was talking about how, especially for women, hormones can deeply impact how ADHD presents, even like on a monthly cycle. And I'm still breastfeeding Quinn. And so my periods are coming regularly, but I feel like my hormones are still off, like they're not leveled out. And so in the past, I never really felt a lot of effects of like PMS or the week before my cycle. And recently, I've been feeling those effects a lot greater. And I can tell during that week before my cycle, when my hormones are tanking and all these things are going on, I have a really hard time focusing and I get very overwhelmed. Without without fail, the last few months, the week before my period comes, I find myself crying and saying, I can't do it all anymore. Like I just get really, really overwhelmed. And I think, you know, obviously hormones are at play. And my ADHD is at play, but it's been interesting to find that link between hormones. And I also think that since I discovered that, I also think that 
it makes sense to me that I was diagnosed with ADHD after I became a mom because I had learned how to cope and work and do all of these things within my life to be a high functioning, achieving CEO. But then when I had kids, one, my hormones changed massively, but two, my time evaporated, right? So I used to be able to work for 10 hours a day and get all these things done. Well, suddenly my time evaporates. My brain is in a million different places. I'm now caring for another human being. It's no wonder it was a massive struggle for me to figure out how to come back to work after having Coco and what did that work look like and how do I focus on the right work? You know, I've talked about this in a different context, but to pull it into the ADHD zone, when I first came back after having Coco, I remember just being so frustrated because I felt like I was working so hard in the business. But at the end of the day, I was like, nothing is getting done. I would literally like open up my computer and be like, I don't even know what to do. I know things need to get done, but I don't even know where to begin. And I'd be so overwhelmed because I knew there were so many things that needed to get done. And then there were so many things to get done that I'd be so overwhelmed. And I created this like loop for myself that made it really hard to like move forward and like actually get results. And I've shared about how after postpartum and coming back from maternity leave, I ended up hiring Marissa, who on my team has been my integrator, which has been such a life changer. But I never really looked at it in terms of correlation to my ADHD. I needed someone who was organized. I needed someone who would say, this is what we need from you today. I needed someone who would literally lay out my to-do list so that I could actually achieve the things that only I could achieve. And again, I think that I was able to function without someone like Marissa for so long because I had just created this lifestyle where I could work a lot, but now I have a kid and my time has evaporated and my priorities have changed and my brain is thinking about her nap schedule and sleep schedule and all of these different things on top of work. And now I need more structure. And so that has been an interesting link that I recently kind of connected in terms of just like looking at my history and being like, oh yeah, this makes sense. I was laughing the other day. And I don't think he'll mind me sharing, but I feel like Drew and I are wired so differently. I mean, we are just... We could not be wired more differently. And I think in our situation, opposites attract. And I think that I personally need someone like Drew now that I even know more about myself and my brain. However, I also know people who marry each other. They both have ADHD and that works well for them. But I think that a lot of things have been revealed as I start to uncover more of like how my ADHD presents and impacts me personally. And Drew is like the kind of guy, like when we first met in college, I remember his room in this crappy house that he rented was so organized. His bed was always made. He had these like Tupperware containers in his closet with like organized batteries. Like he was the kind of person where I could say like, do you have a AAA battery? And he could like pull out the perfect tote and know exactly where it was. Whereas if somebody asked me for that, I would be like opening remotes, me like, here, just take this one. This one will work. Or like digging through a junk drawer and being like, I know there's one somewhere. I'll find it. That's like how my brain is. And so it's been really interesting navigating because Drew is very organized. He's very routinized. He has, you know, a place for everything. Everything has a place. That is not how I am. Over the years, I have greatly moved and migrated my life in a way that helps support him and his tidiness. And I genuinely crave and love organization. Like it helps my messy brain when we have an organized and clean home. However, one of the sticking points as of late is like, I feel like he doesn't understand my brain and he can get really frustrated with me. And so for example, this week, I was very overwhelmed. I was in my PMS stage. I was in that place of like, I can't do it all anymore of like knowing that my hormones are wreaking havoc and everything. I was very aware of all of it. But in these scenarios, it gets really hard for me to do really simple things. So for example, he cleaned and folded laundry putting it away. I just like, I would see the pile and I would look at it and I just like, couldn't put it away. Mail, mail stresses me out probably more than anything. Opening mail. I don't know what it is. It's just something about the uncertainty of it. I don't know. I I can't explain it. Mailing out packages. Like if I order something and I tell myself I need to return it, I can literally picture a box right now in our mudroom that needs to be returned. And I need to just like, you know, process a return thing, struggle with it. So there are like these executive things that are really hard for me to do, especially when I feel overwhelmed. 
So the other night we had gotten home from a uh, evening with our family, we were going to watch a show on TV. And instead, what we ended up doing was like preparing to like make our week smoother. So we were doing paperwork, we were sending out the mail, I like cleaned out my locker in our mudroom, I went into my office, I cleaned it out and like, figuring out like ways that like when I get the energy and like the ability to knock all of those tasks out, I feel so much better. But when I am also so overwhelmed that I can't do those things, I also have to like remind myself like, this is a disorder. It is okay that you are struggling. Here's how we can get tools to get help. It's no secret that business owners are under a lot of pressure right now. We're pressured to get more leads, close deals faster, get better insights to create the best experience for customers and so much more. So how do we manage it all while still ensuring the best customer service? That's where HubSpot comes in. HubSpot is a customer relationship management tool that is easy to set up, intuitive to use, and customizable to the way that you do business. Drag and drop your way to attention-grabbing emails and landing pages, set up marketing automation to give every contact white glove treatment, plus AI-powered tools like Content Assistant mean less time spent on tedious manual tasks and more time for what matters most, your customers. HubSpot has all the tools you need to wow prospects, lock in deals, and improve customer service response times. Let HubSpot take the pressure off your shoulders and get started for free today at HubSpot.com. Nuggets, mac and cheese, pancakes, rinse and repeat. My kids love these simple meals. And honestly, can we blame them? But unfortunately, they are not as nourishing as they are delicious. And as a mom, I am always looking for ways to fill in the nutritional gaps that my girls aren't naturally getting in their diets. And highest children vitamins have been the solution I was looking for. While most children's vitamins are filled with five grams of sugar, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk, yet it tastes great and is perfect for picky eaters. They're packed with 12 organic fruits and veggies and 15 essential vitamins and minerals. And they're designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to your door. After you get this cool bottle with your first order, they then send you eco-friendly refills every month so parents have one less thing to worry about. To receive 50% off your first order of their best-selling children's vitamin, head to HayaHealth.com slash Gold Digger to claim this offer. It's not available anywhere else on their website. Again, that is H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com slash Gold Digger to get your kids the full body nourishment they need. Another thing that has been interesting for me in this process is, you know, I feel like mothers have this innate ability of anticipation. Obviously, I've never lived as a father, so I can't like fully speak to their experience. But I feel like moms have this like special gift of like anticipating what children need, anticipating their sleep schedule, anticipating what snacks to bring, anticipating like what needs to go where. Like moms have this like mental motherhood brain (laughs) that doesn't shut off even when you are working on other things. At least for me, this is for me. I should say this is for me. So I have this thing where like, I'll look at the clock and I'll think of like, okay, what are the kids doing right now? Or what do they need? Or like, does Drew need help with this? And so I'm trying to balance work on top of motherhood. And my brain is like so bogged down with like all of these thoughts, you know, like in a matter of like one minute, I like right now, I could just tell you right now, I'm thinking about, we need to pack car seats for an upcoming trip. I need to not forget Quinn's bonnet. There is sunscreen that we need to grab. We need to make sure that we have the right headphones for the airplane. Like I am thinking about like all of these things while recording this podcast episode. I am also thinking about that box that I need to return that is driving me crazy. I'm thinking about the fact that I threw this sweatshirt that I spilled milk on into the washer and I need to run the washer before we leave for our trip. Like all of these thoughts are in my brain on top of doing the thing that I'm doing. And I've just learned how to work through that craziness. But I've also been really focusing and trying to like empower Drew and like help him to help me. So for example, we're leaving for a trip. The whole family's coming with. Historically speaking, I've done the packing for everyone, right? Like I just kind of become the responsible party. And I was telling Drew, like, I'm really overwhelmed this week. I have a lot going on. So like, here's what I need. And we kind of got into a slight argument because I was like, I'll double check everything before we go. And he's like, okay, well, why am I even doing it if you're just going to like redo it? 
That was not the point, neither here nor there. But I was telling him, like, I just want to make sure that if we get there and we and you forgot something, I'm not blaming you. Like, I want to just like make sure I have this mental checklist in my head that I wish I could just like export to give to you. But do your best. You know what they need. You get things packed. And then I'll just do one final quick check before we go. And so I've been trying to be better at like expressing here's where I need help, but then also like not micromanaging, which is really hard. It's so hard. And so that's been, you know, kind of a sticking point for us at times and something we're both learning about. And I've also just been encouraging Drew like to learn more about ADHD because I often feel like there's actually proven studies around this. I feel like since getting diagnosed, I have this tendency to gaslight myself and convince myself I don't have it and that this is just normal and they were wrong and I'm normal and I'm not really struggling and this is how everyone's brain works. And I go through these phases where I'm like, am I just like making this up? Like, am I just like making something out of nothing? And I also sometimes can feel gaslighted by others when it's like belittled, like it's like, you know, Drew doesn't understand the struggle of like executive functions and how that weighs on me. And so sometimes I can feel like you don't understand like how stressful this is, or like I see this pile and I know I need to do something about it. And I don't know why it is so hard for me to take action on it, but it is. And so I've been encouraging him to also learn more about it just so he can try to comprehend what it's like to be inside of my brain. It was funny the other night, we were getting ready for bed and we don't sleep with our phones in our rooms or like devices in our room. And I like all of a sudden, right before I was about to fall asleep, I had like five important thoughts. I was like, I need to text this one friend. I need to email this person back. I need to not forget this one thing. And like all of a sudden, my brain just like turned back on as I was about to wind down for bread. And so I ran downstairs and I got a notepad and a pen and I'm keeping it in my nightstand because a lot of times when I wake up in the middle of the night, my brain is racing and it's like things that I'm worried I'm going to forget or I don't trust myself to remember. And so I was like, I don't have my phone next to me. I don't want to like jump on and take action immediately. I need to just leave myself notes so that I can remember to follow through and that my brain can release these thoughts so that I can actually rest. And so it was like one of those things where it's like Drew's like totally winding down, super content reading a book. And all of a sudden I'm like, like all these things that are happening inside of my brain. And I'm like, I know I need to go to bed, but I need to like do these things that's stressing me out. And so that has just been another thing is just like having a notepad or like leaving myself sticky notes to remind myself. One final thing that has been really helpful, and I'm kind of laughing because the flow of this episode is 1000% riddled with ADHD because I left myself notes, but didn't really like give myself a solid outline. So welcome to this. One other thing that has been helpful for me is I recently learned about time blindness. And so I am someone who if I have like an appointment on my calendar, I'm oftentimes like get ready. And I'm like, just thinking about the appointment, I have a hard time of like, doing regular things leading up to the appointment, because all I can think about is the appointment. And then a lot of times I'll be ready early before the appointment happens. And so I'll be like, Oh, I have like 20 minutes, I might as well go fold that load of clothes, or maybe I'll just do that one email that I need to get done. And all of a sudden, I'll get so enraptured in whatever it is that I'm doing that all of a sudden now I'm running late. And the entire time I'm heading to my appointment, I'm berating myself because I'm now running late. I hate being late. It is probably my greatest like anxiety is like being late and like making other people feel like their time is not valuable is the worst thing in my opinion. And so I recently learned about like time blindness, which is a tendency of people with ADHD where like you can get so into something. And I can totally see this now within my work of like, if I am excited about something or obsessed about something, I can like get into it and like two hours later, be like, Oh, I thought 20 minutes had passed. I struggle anticipating how long something is going to take me. And I also struggle like just getting out the door on time. So one thing that has been helpful is when I make appointments, like a dentist appointment, I am scheduling it into my phone 10 minutes earlier than it really is, which means I'm showing up actually early to my appointments. Yesterday, I had an appointment at the dermatologist and I was there early. Whereas in the past, I've been like running in frantic, like three minutes late. So I've been trying to just like figure out things because it's funny. I'll like plug it into my phone early and then I'll be like, wait, was it really early or is that the right time? I don't know. I better just get there when it says I need to be there. And so I've been trying to just figure out ways to like help reduce some of that anxiety and also to like not berate myself when things like that happen. Like 
It's a part of how I am and it's a part of what I am learning. Yesterday, I shared something about having ADHD and someone had sent me a DM and she had just asked, you know, are you medicated? And I am not medicated. So I was diagnosed about a year ago. I have been nursing and breastfeeding my daughter Quinn the entire time that I've been diagnosed. And I am not opposed to medication, but I don't think that it will be a route that I go at least initially. I am really interested in trying different ways to support my brain and kind of get the right type of help that I need to like understand what I can do on my own, how I can structure my work, how I can get the right help in terms of team, how I can communicate better to my husband. Like I've just been really kind of on this journey of like trying to figure it out and work with what I've got. But she had said, she's like, you know, I feel like as a business owner, I've just always doubted my ability because I know that I have this thing and I just feel like I can't, there's no way I'm going to be successful. And I know so many CEOs and amazing leaders who you likely follow that have ADHD. And the more that I talk about it, the more that people come out of the woodwork and share that they also have it. And I really do believe that it is a part of my superpower. I know that in this episode, I've talked about some of the recent challenges because that's just kind of where I've been. But I also believe that my ADHD has really helped me get obsessed with the right things and learn and be a student of the right things and, and, you know, be willing to experiment and figure out ways to structure my work so that I can really learn how to focus better. I think that it has allowed me to really be multifaceted and multi-passionate and not, you know, turn away my different curiosities. It's allowed me to explore different things. It's allowed me to look at time in a different way. And so, yes, it is a disorder and I think it's important to note that that if you are someone that has it, it does wreak havoc in your life. It does change how you show up and it does impact the way that you can do the things that you want to do in the way that you can do them. But at the same point too, I also want to say that I think that some of the things that even when I look back as a child, it has helped prepare me to be where I am today and run the type of business that I run and show up as a leader that I am. And so it's interesting because someone recently asked me like, if you could not have it, would you remove it? And it's funny because I just don't even know how to visualize what that would be like because I've just always been this way. And so it's hard for me to be like, oh yeah, I would totally change it because I don't know. I feel like I am me because of it and in spite of it. It's been really interesting because since being diagnosed, I just feel like I pay closer attention to things and I focus more on supporting my brain and understanding it and i also just am curious to see like where this will go you know i feel like a baby in the adhd space i am a baby in the adhd space there is so much for me to learn so much for me to know and understand and so it's been this very interesting journey i just feel like this last year has just been a really interesting year for me you know having my second daughter being done with the pregnancy and newborn stage of life, moving into this next season of life, launching a book, putting myself out there in an entirely new way, getting diagnosed with ADHD, doing Invisalign, turning 35. Like there's just been so many things that have happened. And I'm thankful that I'm the kind of person who's like welcoming this next identity, this next iteration of myself while also really exploring like, what does this look like? And what is this going to be? So it's been a really interesting journey. I'm really excited for you to listen to an upcoming episode with my friend, Dr. Sasha Hamdani, who has been a really incredible resource for me and just like a friend for me. Not only is she a psychiatrist that specializes in ADHD, but she also has ADHD herself. And so it's been so helpful to have a friend to like vent to or to ask questions to. And she has just been like a really incredible person in this. And I will say that if you are someone who is growing a business with ADHD, or you are working on a side hustle or starting a dream, honor the way that your brain is. Don't berate yourself and figure out ways that you can support your brain. Pay attention. Check in with yourself on when things are going really well, what's working for you and do more of that. A few final things that I want to leave you with in true ADHD fashion. I don't think this will be wrapped up with a pretty bow, but a few things that have been really helpful for me. So one, taking one day 
or even just like one hour to do all the things that I've been putting off that have been stressing me out. So again, like we did on that Sunday night of just like organizing my locker, doing the mail, mailing out bills, like all of that really helped for me to start my week. Don't they always say like a Sunday well spent brings a week of content? Whatever that quote is, that has been really helpful. Number two is having a more defined workspace. Having my office has been so transformative for me and my focus. Having a space where I sit down and I know when I sit down, I do work. And that's something that I historically did not have. I used to work from my bed or the couch or whatever. And that was really hard for my brain to like pivot and be like, okay, now it's time to work or relax or sleep or enjoy. And so having a workspace has been super transformative. And then also figuring out how can I work well with others and express when I am overwhelmed or I need more time or I need help organizing things. That has been really, really helpful for me as well, whether it is in my life with my husband or with my team is just saying like, can you help me organize this? Or I need you to put this on my to-do list so I don't forget it. Or sending over thoughts and saying, I know this is super random, but I'm just thinking about it right now and I don't want to forget it. So I just wanted to leave you with this thought and expressing over openly that this is just a part of how my brain works. And here's how you can best support it. That has been really, really helpful for me. I'm excited to continue unpacking what this looks like. And I know this will be just a lifelong journey. And I would highly encourage you if you are someone listening to this and you maybe just kind of have that spidey sense of like, whoa, maybe I have this to talk to your doctor or a professional about it. Having a formal diagnosis has been very life-changing for me and transformative for me. And it also has allowed me to take this seriously and really explore it with a different mindset than I would if I was just someone who maybe had an inkling. And so I just highly encourage you to dig into it if this sounds like it's something that you might have. And I also just want to remind you that it presents differently in everyone as well. Thank you so much for letting me come on here, share my life, share my brain, share what I am working on and going through as a human being. I love having this space with you. And I hope that this was insightful, if anything. Of course, until next time, Gold Diggers, all I want for you to do is to keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 